Hello Year 3, welcome back. This is the second part to our moving and directions. So we had this working at our last video and we showed how to tidy up our code so that Pico could move a lot easier. This time we're going to move the other characters and and make this game sort of have that sort of game feel where we're we're chasing something and we are hopefully going to get some points and scores. The thing is at the moment when you can see that when I hit the planet and I catch that, there is that popping sound that tells me that I've something's happened, that Pico has hit this character, but this sprite will always be in the same spot. And so we had this made last lesson. What we really need to do is, while this is waiting for two seconds, we kind of need something to happen. And so what I did was I decided to make this cat, this sprite move somewhere while it was hiding. So if we read our code here, when green flag is clicked, show, because we want it to appear when we start the game, forever in those special forever loops. And just like we had, um, had on our controls in our other video, we've got if touching Pico. Then play the sound pop. Once the pop happens, it's gonna hide. It's gonna hide for two seconds and then it'll show. But that's pretty boring because it's always gonna be in the same spot. So what I did here was, while it's hiding, I'm going to go and glide for one second to a particular point on the stage. So this stage here, this stage here has a particular size. And if you look closely, you can see that these numbers seem to change whenever my mouse moves around the stage. If you look at them carefully, you can see that when I go left, that number goes to minus 240. If I go all the way to the right, you'll see it'll go past zero in a second. There, it'll go through zero. And then now it's in the positive numbers and it'll go all the way to 240 on the other side. That's called the X axis and that's going, so if you shake your head and say no, that's how I remember it. So if you shake your head from side to side, and you say no, as if you'll say no, you remember that side to side and that's X. If we say yes and nod our head in agreement, our head goes up and down. That's how I remember it, it's the Y. So I'm gonna say yes, up and down, no, from side to side. And you can see that my number changes in the Y axis too, and it goes all the way to minus 180 to the bottom of the screen. And then it'll go all the way up through zero, and now it'll go to positive numbers, and it'll go all the way to 180 at the top. So that's what I did with my code. While I was gliding, I don't want it to go to the same space over and over again. That's not very fun. Instead, I want my computer to choose, I want the game to choose a random space on here that I have to go and chase, okay? So my random operators are actually here. And what I did was change it to its maximum values on either side. So X, remember, when we cross our head from side to side, we've got X minus 240 to plus 240. So that's what I've got in there, and I've typed it in there, and I changed the number to minus 240. And remember, we had those oval shapes, and they go in the oval shapes there, and on the other side, I did minus 180 to 100, 180, positive. So I'm gonna go and slot that in there, and you can see that it's given, while I hold my mouse down, you can see that it's asking me where I want it to go in that piece of code, in that simple forever loop. So in my if statement, if it's hitting, it'll hide, hide for two seconds, the glide while it's hiding, and it should be invisible, and it'll show again. So let's see what this looks like. I'll make sure that I've clicked my green flag. We're gonna keep our code open here, and then I'm gonna go and hit my sprite, the planet. It'll pop, 
and hopefully it'll go random to somewhere else, and it has, right in the corner. Now while you're watching this video, it's going to be very annoying with that sound, so I'm going to do this last one, and I think we can see from those four examples that it is kind of randomised, and it should be a, a little bit better, it will get better than that. So that's what we're going to do. So I've got my code here. You can edit this. You can go and get these pieces of code here. While we're doing that, your task now is to work out how can I make this game better? If we're going to play a game, let's say we're going to play a game of football, the idea is that we score goals and we get more points, or goals as we call them. We start at zero. Computer games generally start somewhere else. How can we make our game using points and scores and things like that to make this more competitive? Do we choose more do we choose more points? Do we add points? Do we get points when we do here? When we play a game of football, we only have a certain amount of time. So maybe there's a time element. Maybe we have to get to this in a in a set time. Maybe this is only here for a set time. Maybe it only shows for a set time and then hides again. In which case, we may have to go and use another wait button somewhere in here. And you can see that I've very cheekily put in half a second. This is up to you. That's your little task. That is week two.